Ain't Slayed Nobody is a produced actual play podcast intended for adults and may contain material that some people find disturbing. Please see the episode notes for content warnings and listen with care. We'll begin with Johnny, who has just performed the Ritual of the Seven Cuts with Ida by his side. Once he successfully removed his foot, Johnny fell unconscious. I believe after choosing not to spend his remaining luck. Correct. You are going to lose d20 dex for that foot. It's more difficult to get around. Maybe you could earn some decks back as Johnny gets used to having just the heel of that left foot, but it's not a given. I'm at 66 decks now. That's really good. He lost a foot and only four decks. Wow. And I'd mentioned Ida was by your side, but she's gone now. Oh. Yeah, there's no sign of her. No sign of Birdie. The tent is gone. The trunks are gone. The blankets and pillows are gone. And there's no smell of incense on the air. No Zoltar machine, nothing. No, she hasn't left a trace. You hear Sinead and Wilbur shuffling around nearby, so at least they didn't run off. Whew! And as you continue regaining consciousness, you're lying here on the ground, on the dirt. You're looking up at the moon and stars. You completed the ritual sometime around dusk, but it's well into the night now. You might guess it's nine or ten o'clock. Okay. Johnny, as you're regaining your senses, you feel something pulling at your left foot. Uh, which I no longer have, right? That that foot? Yeah, I think it might take you a second to realize how odd this sensation is. But it's like something is tugging at that phantom foot. It's not especially painful, but it's irritating. Okay. And to that point, you might have expected to wake up in agony, but you're really feeling okay. Can I get a gander at that foot? Sure, you're groggy. You snorted a lot of heroin. Uh There must be some kind of lingering sickness from that. (laughs) And now you've opened your eyes to take in some of your surroundings, and you look down at your foot, or where it used to be. Things are hazy, it's really dark out here, but you're going to see paws. Pause the dog, or I have paws. (laughs) Pause the wolf. Okay. <laughs> and the wolf. Oh, I'm so glad we got to revisit that. <laughs> so <laughs> We're playing the hits. <laughs> this is now this is already a fan service episode. <laughs> Pause is playfully tugging at these little strips, little shreds of skin that are hanging off that stump of yours. Oh, he's shaking them in his mouth like a dog with a toy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's nibbling at your leg. He's licking it. Hey, Paws, how you doing there, buddy? Um, that's that's still a little tender. How about we, how about we just not do that? Come here, buddy. Come here, boy. <laughs> Good. 
Thank you, Wes. That's perfect. <laughs> Paws is timid, as you know. He's a shy dog. A shy wolf. I'm trying to avoid saying it. <laughs> a, a wolf that is... Uh, <laughs> that took so much effort. How is it weirder when you do it right? It took so much effort. I can see it on your face. <laughs> Yeah, and Paws backs off your leg a little bit when you start talking to him. And he walks toward your face as you're calling him over. He's nuzzling you, Johnny. Good boy, good boy. <laughs> Wes, you're saving me a lot of time in sound design. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Paws, as I mentioned, was chewing on some of that loose skin where you've cut off your foot. But you'll notice that the area looks good. It looks clean, other than these bits of skin. The wound is not actively bleeding. It's almost like it was cauterized. Mm -hmm. You might not be sure how that's possible, but maybe Ida did something? Or that blessed letter opener? It's weird, but convenient. Okay. You're lying here with paws licking your face now. Sinead has walked up beside you. Y'all two are the only friends I got left. Sorry, Wilbur. Sorry. Y'all three. Thank you for sticking by me. And as Paws is excitedly prodding you with his nose, you will notice that he rustles a piece of paper in your shirt pocket, and you don't remember having anything in that pocket. Well, let's go ahead and check that out. This is like my note on the dresser. When I wake up the next morning. <laughs> it's a Dear Johnny letter. Ah, oh, it was right on the table and you went for it. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went for it because the letter literally starts with Dear Johnny. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> As you will see, unfolding this piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Dear Johnny, I'm taking Birdie and moving on. I need to get her home before the sun rises. Someone needs to start looking out for this child. <laughs> Those seven cuts were fine work, but that was the easy part. If you're still sure you want to bind the dark young. Remember that sacrifices come from the heart. It has to matter for it to count. Maybe that old Mary yours? Hell, that might count for two. Use your letter opener under the moon, in a forest if you can manage. Thankfully, a dark young usually brings the forest with her. Say these words when you perform the ritual. Claia, mother of the thousand young, mistress of the grain, come now. Claia. I can't help you with the pronunciation this time, but I'm sure you'll figure it out. Oh, and one last thing. For this binding to work, you need to draw the dark young out before you make your kill. Huh. Just put one foot in front of the other, and I'm sure you'll do fine. Good luck out there, Ida. All right, well, and I look at Paws and Sinead and say, well, reckon we'll just figure that out when we get there. What do y'all think? <laughs> they look at you blankly, like dumb animals. Sure. Uh, but maybe Wilbur seems like he's making a connection. Wilbur, I, I feel like you and I are going to figure things out on this journey. You and I are going to grow closer as a pair. Our little quartet's going to become a family here. Well, I reckon we ought to go get Jeremiah. What do y'all think? Are you talking to the animals? Yeah, I'm Dr. Doolittling this, except I definitely don't understand what they think. <laughs> I know we can't go back and save Ellie yet. If she's with that Brock fella, and I don't know what happened to the preacher, but I got a pretty good idea where Jeremiah is, and I think we ought to go get him. And so he saddles up and heads towards, was it a church basement? Yes, you had overheard a conversation between Dust Devil and Colin Brock. That's when you were snooping around the yard at the mansion. They didn't specify who was in the church basement, but you know that they locked up somebody there recently. We're definitely church bound. Okay, so you're heading to the church, 
And as you know, the church is on a steep hill. You can see it from here. You'll need to decide what to do with these animals. There's a stone staircase heading up the mountain. It was a miracle that Sinead navigated the hotel basement stairs, but she certainly can't do these. And Paws would probably have a difficult time on those goat legs. Let's find a place to tie Sinead up. I mean, this is a a church in the Old West, so I I figure they've got a hitching post of some sort. Yeah, they do have an oversized hitching post, probably for churchgoers. It's at the bottom of the hill. Sure. So we're going to tie Sinead up there. And I'm going to look at Paws and say, Paws, I'm going into that church. You want to stay here or you coming with me? I like to give my animals their own autonomy. Oh, that's good. You give your pets more agency than I give players in this game. Precisely. Eh, That's fair. If you're not tying up paws, are you just heading up the stairs with that one foot? I mean, unless it looks like there's some other entrance to this church, I guess I'm going to head up and listen in at the door and see if I hear anyone in there. There's no obvious entrance down here, no elevator. As you begin heading up the stairs, Paws follows you and walks up the first uh, three or four, but changes his mind when he realizes how steep this staircase is. This is bullshit. (laughs) Well, fair enough. (laughs) He'll go back and lie down next to Sinead. Okay, well, that's fine. As you're climbing these stairs, I assume you put that boot on your leg. Yeah, yeah. I put my boot back on and and I like to think I grabbed a spare piece of cloth or tore a sleeve off my shirt or something and stuffed it into the front of that boot. When you go to shoe stores, you don't have to take the paper out anymore. It's just ready to go. There you go. (laughs) That's how I want them. You have a limp, but you're doing okay. You are getting used to this. You only lost four decks. Other people you know might not even notice the change if they're not looking for it. All right. You'll eventually reach the top of the stairs and find the church. There's no one around outside. You don't see any people. Are there windows? Can I look in the windows, see if there's anything in there? There are windows, but they're thick stained glass with these intricate fractal patterns. You can't see what's going on inside. And you don't notice any moving shapes or shadows or anything like that. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and open that door. Okay, the doors are unlocked. Good, because I didn't ask, but so that's good to know. (laughs) You walk into the church and begin down the center aisle. There are pews on both sides of you. It's all pretty standard. It's a bit smaller, maybe, than it looked from the outside. And straight ahead, there's a small altar, and it looks like there are two hallways that branch off from the main congregation area. Okay, and we don't see anyone, I'm taking it. No, you don't see or hear anybody. All is quiet. Alright, so I go to the hallway on the right. Okay, yeah. And when you turn into that hallway, you're going to find a solid wooden door. There's a big lock on this door. Okay, this one is locked. Locksmithing is not a thing I do. That's unfortunate. So, I'm going to assume if I listen at that door, I don't hear anything. Well, give me a listen roll. That's a 27. That's a hard success. Johnny, you can't help but shiver as you hear the sound of large stones moving. Moving stones? It's the scraping sound that's getting you. It's like rocks sliding against rocks. Sure, sure, sure. Well, first I want to ch- I want to feel around the door frame and stuff and see if somebody just left the key. Okay, that does seem like something this group would do. <laughs> Give me a luck roll. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, but it's 15-6, so no. <laughs> Yeah, you can check around the frame, but you're not finding a key. Just a little dust. Jeremiah, are you in there? Jeremiah! Jeremiah? Jeremiah, 
you are staring into a black void as your brother Joseph's voice calls to you from within. Jeremiah! Your hands are pressed up against the top of a wall. It's made of stone. Oh, it's a well, actually. It's a well, actually? It's a well, actually. (laughs) It's a well, actually. (laughs) I'm so sorry. (laughs) I'm so sorry. Well, actually. Jeez. That's the name of the fucking episode. (laughs) Why am I like that? When you manage to break your gaze from the shaft of this well, you'll know from the color of the sky that you're back in Idaho, back home. Okay. And you'll see a bucket suspended over the well, over the shaft, by a rope. It's attached to a bar. Chuck, you probably know what that's called. You have a well. Modern wells don't really have a bucket. (laughs) Yeah, I guess life's not like King's Quest. That's actually what I was picturing, too, was King's Quest. (laughs) Jeremiah, that you? If you're down there, I'm lowering this bucket. Okay, I'm lowering the bucket. This is a deep well, and it takes a couple of minutes to lower the bucket. You're turning the crank until finally you feel it hit the water. You can't see to the bottom of the well, But Jeremiah would know to let that bucket fill for a minute before bringing it back up. Okay. If you're down there and you need to get out, grab the bucket and pull twice. And I'm going to wait. I'm going fishing for my brother. You are going to feel two firm tugs on that rope. Oh, God. We came into this world tugging and we're going out tugging. (laughs) Mm-hmm. I'm going to uh, yell down, hang on tight, I'm going to pull you up. And then I do that. Okay, you begin to pull up the bucket. It is heavier now. It's more difficult to turn the crank. But it doesn't feel heavy enough for a whole person to be holding on to the end. You're noticing a pungent smell, like rotting meat. It's thick, it's cloying, and it's growing stronger. You hear the thrum of flies. The bucket comes into view, and you see that it's not filled with water. Cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. It looks like a blood-soaked heap of guts and flesh. As you're processing what's in the bucket, Jeremiah, you hear a voice. It's coming from over near the trees off to your left. Hello? Hello? Yes? What? Are you just yelling at her or turning to look? God damn it. I'm turning to look. (laughs) You know, you're always expecting the worst. Yes, I do. (laughs) (laughs) What you see, Jeremiah, is a woman. And she's been buried in the ground up to the neck. Yeah, it's just her head sticking out of the grass. And that's not the worst. This woman has flowing red hair, pointy cheekbones, and her skin is pale. She doesn't look well. (laughs) (laughs) Should have said healthy. She doesn't look healthy. Shit. She sees that you're looking at her now. Yes, yes, over here. Someone's coming for me. I'm in trouble. Listen, I need to get out of here. Help me get out of here. Well, you know, you might want to be a little more specific than that, seeing as you're buried up to your neck. I don't know who it is or what it is, but they've been watching me for a long time, and now they're here. I can feel it. Coming in the air tonight? I was going to say the same thing. (laughs) 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 Who are you? I'm Kate. Kate Caldwell. I've been here a long time. You've been waiting for this moment all your life. I get it. (laughs) Give me the well water. That is not water. I need it. Bring it to me. And what if I bring it to you? Then we can help each other. How? 
I can bring your brother back. You lie. And I start to lower the bucket back down. No, 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 no. I can bring him back. I swear I can. He's dead, isn't he? Joseph is dead. He speaks to me from the well. I stop it for a second. I look this woman in the face. And I say, he was talking to me just now. And then he stopped talking. What does he say to you? He cries for your help. He's desperate. And then I I look at her in the eye and I start to slowly lower the bucket back down into the well. You abandoned him. You left him to die. And what do you have to show for it? You are full of shit! And I drop the bucket all the way back down into the bottom of the well and start to walk away. Why? Why won't you help me? You'll abandon us all. I shouldn't be surprised. Walk away, Jeremiah. You always do. What do you want from me? Stop. I'm going to turn around and say, I want to know where my brother is, and I want to know how to get out of here. Give it to me, and I'll bring him back. I promise. If he's going to come back out of that, maybe I don't want him back. That's your decision. But can you at least help me out of the ground before you leave? Ah. But you want to eat well intestines. I don't want to eat it. I need you to pour it over me. Do you hear the words you're saying to me? All right, fuck it. Jeremiah goes over to the well, pulls it back up, goes back over to the head and dump, like, just flash dance, dumps this bowl of stuff all over her exposed head. Yeah. I love that it's a flash dance dump. Good. And she turns her face up to the sky to soak it in. Then she closes her eyes. Small vines begin climbing out of the ground around her. This is beyond peculiar. They're growing so fast. Tiny rosebuds begin to swell on the vines. Yeah, when one of them blooms... You see at the center a human eyeball. And now other plants are growing up from the dirt. A root begins to emerge, like a bamboo shoot, but it's a human finger. And a patch of grass is forming, but this is human hair. All around Kate, body parts are sprouting in this morbid garden. Once nine or ten of these plants have fully grown, you'll realize, Jeremiah, that these body parts all belong to Joseph. So I have to BYO brother? (laughs) Okay. When the garden's complete, Kate opens her eyes and smiles at you. You You gonna help me? I can try. I can do my best to put him together. Dig me out of the ground. Hurry, we don't have much time. Regretting his decision, Jeremiah begins to use his pickaxe to free the woman from the ground. Oh yeah, you can start pulling out grass and dirt and rocks and digging this woman out with your pickaxe. But what you're going to realize quickly is... I fucked up, okay? This is not a woman's body that you're uncovering. Oh, boy. It's a root system. I knew that shit was... God damn it. This vast and twisted network of roots. They seem to extend very deep into the ground. Gosh, I don't know if you'd ever be able to dig all of this out. The roots are everywhere. Kate's face turns like she's growing impatient. You can see I've brought him back. I did what I said I would. We can do the next part together. They'll be here soon, please. Well, it looks like I was right the first time to not dump shit over your head. And here you are. (laughs) (laughs) Let's cut back to Johnny in the church. Johnny, you had just yelled Jeremiah's name into a closed door. But you're not getting any sort of response besides the echo of your own voice. No response 
is not the worst case scenario, so we'll call that neutral. It's a church. Is there some sort of like big iron candle holder thing somewhere? Yes. Up near the altar, there are these large candle stands, these floor candelabras that they must use for ceremonial candles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got some heft to them. Oh, for sure. They're heavy, probably iron. Yeah, so I'm going to take one of those and see if I can smash off the whole, like, doorknob and stuff. Okay, as you pick one of these things up, and I assume you'll take the one closest to the door? Yeah. Johnny is all about economy of movement at this point. (laughs) Johnny's going to have to muster all of his strength to get this up in the air. All of that strength that I have. Do give me a strength roll. All right, let's give it a shot. Ooh, that is a four that I rolled. Oh, wow. Okay, a four. It's as though someone much stronger than Johnny did this, and it was a very motivated act. (laughs) You smash down with the iron stand, and the lock breaks off and falls through the door. Sweet. You hear it thunk down a dozen steps or so, and it lands on something soft. I like it. And as Johnny swings the door open, he draws his letter opener. Oh, nice. You have that enchanted letter opener at the ready. And you're going to see just a bit of light. Maybe the flicker of a candle. I am going to go down there slowly and carefully. I'm not going to pretend that this is a stealth move since I did just knock the doorknob off (laughs) the door. (laughs) Sure, yeah. You're not seeing or hearing anything at first, but it's rather dark. The first thing you notice is your foot, your foot that you still have, it's going to hit something when you step off the stairs. It's like a heavy sack. And if you step around that into the candlelight a bit, you find a human head. Okay. It looks like it rolled out from that sack. It's on the ground. It's facing the far wall, Johnny. And you'll realize that this is Teddy's head. Gosh, you just saw him. Oh, Teddy. Oh, fucking Teddy. Teddy. You just dropped him off at the general store. I am going to ask for a sanity check on finding Teddy like this. Ah, fuck. (laughs) Oh, that's an 81, so that's a no. Give me a D4. Oh, good. I got a three. Okay, take off three more points. Fuck me. Johnny says, oh. Oh, we... Damn it, Jeremiah, I told you we should have saved him those three or four opportunities that we had. Why did we keep getting distracted by various other things and forgetting you existed, Teddy? We did not. You did not deserve this, I assume, having never actually spoken to you. You spoke to him a little bit, enough that it's going to bother you when out of the burlap sack, you notice a partial arm sticking out and there's an extended finger on the hand. It's kind of crooked. It seems to be pointing at you. Uh, Teddy, I'm going to assume that's yours, and I want you to know that this was not my fault. I tried. It was perhaps the minimum amount of effort that could be considered trying, but I would like to note it was more than anyone else attempted. Yeah, you got him out of the hotel. At least it's not a middle finger. It's his pointer finger. (laughs) And with that sanity loss... You're going to back away from Teddy until you bump into bars, into a cage. Yeah, there's a cell back here in the basement. Okay, I'm going to grab that candle and bring it over to the cage and see if I can see if Jeremiah is in there. Yeah, you hold the candle up to the cage. Does Johnny need a moment to gather courage after that last cellar you were in? I don't know. I befriended some animals. Oh, good point. You didn't really have a problem with those animals. <laughs> you didn't see the cats, though. I, I And I still will not. Oh, we'll see. 
holding the candle in between the bars, you'll find Jeremiah. He's crumpled on the floor. He looks to be alone in there. Hey, hey, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, wake up. Is this, is the cage door open? It's not open, but, oh, this is fortuitous. Maybe this was intentional or very sloppy, but there is a ring of keys and they're hanging from a key that's sticking out of the cage door. Well, finally, my luck has returned. (laughs) You're assuming it's lucky to get in there. You monster. And I unlock the cage and go in to check on Jeremiah. As you approach Jeremiah's body, you'll see that he's face down on the floor. His clothing, these rags he's wearing now, they're torn. He doesn't have any possessions. There's blood everywhere. Not just where Jeremiah's lying, but there's blood all over the floor and walls. Is he breathing? He's breathing, but unconscious. All right, Jeremiah. I have never read you have a body. (laughs) I'm not gifted with your medicinal skills, so... What do you say you and I just van moves out of here and we'll uh, we'll see if we can figure things out once we get somewhere that is not covered in blood. I'm going to take your silence as a tacit agreement of my plan. How do you want to get him out of here? You're a foot down. I'm a foot down. I'd love to attempt a fireman's carry. Okay, we've been having a lot of success with those, so I'll let you try that. When you turn him over, you'll see that Jeremiah's face is bloodied. It's like someone was wailing on him. Oh, shit. Well, all right. He's missing more teeth, you think. It's hard to say. I was going to say, he. Uh, there's no way to know if that's new damage or old. All right, I'm going to take him out of the church. Okay, you'll be a little worn down after carrying Jeremiah up those stairs. Well, if I didn't, if the carry didn't work, I was going to drag him by his feet and just thunk his head up every step, and that was going to be in- not glamorous. I doubt I'm doing much more damage than he's already sustained. Well, you could drag him so his feet are hitting the ground instead of his head. There you go. That's probably for the... Uh, yeah, see, and Johnny hadn't even considered that until you said that. It does make more sense to not drag you by your feet. <laughs> this is exhausting, but you eventually make it to the hitching post. All of this is just slowing you down. I'm going to take him over to Sinead and sort of toss him over her back like a sack of potatoes. And then, like, lash him down securely so that I feel like he's not going to fall off. I mean, we're not going to be galloping out of town, but, you know. Um, remembering how Sam was tied to the horse after Baylor Peak? Right. It's kind of like that, except I don't, I don't hate him. <laughs> I unreasonably hated Sam. I'm not being mean about it. I'm trying to make him comfortable. If you ride slowly, he probably won't fall off the horse. Okay. And then we are going to, is it still cover of night kind of time of day? Oh yeah, it's dark. All right, pause. I think it's time to get out of here. And we are going to head for the bridge out of town. Town is very still right now. It's always quiet here. But, well, with the exception of the welcoming party, but it seems like no one is around. Would you say it's too quiet? Yeah, it's too quiet. It's unnerving. Something is brewing. No doubt. And that's why we're leaving. Oh, yeah. There's trouble afoot. Uh, uh, Don't say afoot. (laughs) You have a foot. (laughs) There's trouble two feet. (laughs) And on the way to the bridge... Does it look like there's anyone in the general store? All of the buildings appear to be empty. I'm going into the general store and I'm looking for 
flint and tinder and possibly anything that is flammable, like, I don't know, some papers or something. You might have to break a window on the door to get in, but they'll have newspaper, clothing, plenty of things to ignite. I'm going to take enough of that that I think this is the proper amount to begin a fire on a bridge. Okay, you can pretty easily find all the things you would need to make a fire. Okay, finish ransacking this town on my way out. (laughs) Are you going through the cash box? (laughs) You know, I was a big fan of the owner of the general store when he in theory sent my letter that I don't know if he sent. But then he did let Teddy get beheaded. I assume that he had some hand in that. So fuck him. Okay, fair enough. He did seem eager to get that letter out, though, so who knows? All right, so we're going to cross the bridge. And I'm going to dismount with my various arson accoutrement. Yeah, it's been a long time since we've had fire. I know, we haven't burned anything down in a while. So I'm going to set everything up in what I think is an excellent quick-starting fire Mm -hmm. situation. And as I strike the flint with my Bowie knife. Hasn't flint been through enough? (laughs) I'm going to say this one last fires for you, Lance. (laughs) That's right. I forgot he was the arsonist. Because he was absolutely the arsonist of the group. (gasps) I love it. Okay, the fire starts slowly. But once the flames begin to catch... You watch as those wards, the symbols that have been partially scratched away, they're kind of melting. They're fading from the bridge as it goes up in flames. And it's up to you, Chuck, but it might cross Johnny's mind that he's trapped his friends in Olvido. Well, you know, one of them's definitely dead already. Frankly, if this doesn't all go to plan anyway, they're all going to die. So, yeah, what's two more? (laughs) This whole show is some kind of demented trolley car problem. You know, we'll all improvise. And so with sort of one last look at his uh, handiwork, Johnny is going to saddle up and make his way purposefully, but not enough to tax Sinead Mm -hmm. back towards the forest where we encountered that creature. The sort of uh, goat-footed tentacle tree. I don't know how to describe that. Ida called it a dark young. The dark young. I'm going to go attempt to locate the dark young. Okay, so you'll be on your way under a full moon. And as you're riding by moonlight back the way you came, you'll pass between the farmhouse and the barn where you found Birdie. Both buildings have been burnt to the ground. You saw the fire from your hotel window. There's almost nothing left here. You see a shovel and maybe a couple of tools. It's mostly heaps of ash. Those assholes. But what you will see, Johnny, in plain sight, inside the barn area, is a human corpse. It's been burned through completely. It's a charred skeleton now. Ah, is this a person I can identify from the charred remains? You can estimate the size. It looks like an adult, but it's hard to say. Okay. Would you say that this charred body is Father Flint-sized? Oh, for sure smaller than Flint. Okay. Uh, The body's positioned oddly. At least one arm is. Yeah, one of those fingers seems to be pointing at you, Johnny. Son of a bitch, why are they all doing that? The finger follows you as you're riding through. Johnny extends his finger and points right back at it as he rides by. And then as he passes by, uh, changes that to the bird. (laughs) Okay, that's fine. (laughs) I'm just going to say over my shoulder, I'm going to assume you was one of the bad people, so fuck you. (laughs) Sure, that's a good thing to talk yourself into. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. 
Okay, it was at least a couple of hours of riding out from that oasis to the farm. Are you going straight out there? As Paws tags along. Yeah, exactly at the the maximum speed where nobody is being overextended. Johnny, as you're approaching this area where all of you camped before, it looks mostly unchanged. Except you don't remember the trees being quite this dense. It's like you've ridden into a forest without even realizing it. And you can barely see the moon now. It's peeking through the canopy of leaves. There is some moonlight cascading down off the leaves and branches. They almost look moist. Okay. You can see the remains of your fire, that huge fire that Ellie built here. And remember when you were riding Sinead and you got the smell of rot as you approached the cattle rustlers? Right, right. That's hitting your nose once again. And one of the trees in the distance looks a little bit off. Okay. So I think we found the right spot. And I'm going to untie and as deftly as can be get Jeremiah down to the ground. (laughs) Hopefully without just fucking crushing his skull. (laughs) Okay. And I'm going to go over, I'm going to take whatever I have left of the newspapers and cloth and stuff and some sticks laying around, and I'm going to start to build a fire where we had our campfire before. Okay, nice. I'm going to attempt to recreate our situation since I don't actually know what it is brought about. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Since you have all those supplies from the general store, you don't need to roll survival to build this fire. Okay. Okay. It's been one hell of a week, huh, Jeremiah? You know, when we met, I thought you was crazy as a shithouse rat. After, well, all this. Now I reckon maybe you was just ahead of the curve. You know, a couple years back, me and Jack was tasked with running off some cattle rustlers who was grazing their herds on Uncle Sam's land. Eh, They were an agreeable enough lot, though, so we gave them a hand driving that herd back where they belonged. You spending much time around cattle? Here's the thing. They ain't dumb. Uh, Don't get me wrong, they sure as hell ain't smart, but dumb ain't the right word. Dumb means you know something's going on and you can't figure it out, but cattle? Well, they ain't even got a clue something's going on. Cattle don't understand politics or shipping trade lines or how to distill whiskey. They don't understand anything past the grass in front of their face. No idea the world around them right up until the butcher puts a blade in their throat. I wish I could tell you I knew this was the right thing to do. Can't say as much of anything feels right anymore. I'm starting to understand that maybe we're all just cattle. We ain't dumb. We just got no idea what's going on around us. No idea the butcher's right around the corner sharpening his blade. Like as not, this will be the end of the road for me, too. Even if I see sun up, might be I'll wish I never did. I spent a couple of years looking for, I don't know what, fate, I guess? If I even believe in that shit. Maybe I was just looking for the end. But I got people back home. I reckon even a crazy old coot like you's got someone to care about somewhere. Uh, You was a goner if I'd left you in that jail anyhow. Maybe this'll work. Maybe we can still make this mean something. I'm sorry, Jeremiah. You tell that brother yours hello for me. As for me, I'm going to go try to shake hands with the butcher. Are you going to say the chant and fucking kill me? Let's do it. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, man. Okay. 
And with that, Johnny strikes his butcher knife to the flint and lights that fire. Okay. Yeah, and you're you're going to be able to get an impressive blaze. It's almost as mighty as the one that Ellie built when uh, you were here. That can't possibly be time. true. She rolled like a four to build. <laughs> I'm trying that to fire. make you feel good about yourself. Uh, when I say almost, <laughs> it's about half the size. Right. <laughs> but when you light the fire and you start to take in more of your surroundings by firelight, you're going to notice that tree again, the one in the distance that seemed a little off to you. It's larger than the rest of the trees and the limbs are flowing like fabric despite its size based on what you remember much of the creature is still buried in the ground don't think I don't see you over there why don't you come on out let's have a chat when you start yelling at it Johnny it begins writhing more aggressively I said you come on out here And I'm going to draw the letter opener. We're right here. You come on out. You're sure these are tentacles, but it hasn't pulled itself out of the ground yet. Not at the sound of your voice alone. I'm going to grab a tree branch out of that fire. And I'm going to hold it over my head and I'm going to say, Hey, I said you get out here now and I'm going to... hurl it just generally in that direction. I assume I can't actually throw it that far, but just trying to get its attention. Give me a throw roll. Oh, right. I love throw rolls. You do, and I (laughs) don't... Oh, that's a 19. What's my throw? The base is 20, so that's got to be good. It is 20. Okay. But I don't want to hit it. Okay. I want it to land, like, right next to it. (laughs) I'm not trying to hurt the thing necessarily. The burning branch lands close to those wriggling arms. And the firelight, at least temporarily, it gives you a better look at these thick tentacles. Those are reaching out for the sky. The burning branch you threw, it's giving off just enough heat that the creature is compelled to use its tentacles to dig into the dirt. It's beginning to pull its body out of the earth. You've irritated it. Yeah, you get on over here, little girl. A torrent of rocks and roots sprays from the ground as this thing begins to resurface, and these giant cloven hooves pound the dirt. Johnny, you got closer than anybody to this creature last time, and this is the same beast. You are 100% sure. It's trampling towards you from out of this large hole in the earth. Those hooves look like they could crush at least three men each, and this thing is picking up a head of steam. It's heading straight towards you. Eight mouths are screaming at you, Johnny, and those razor-sharp teeth... They're dripping black ooze. And I'm going to say, that's right. Johnny's back. Surprisingly, it doesn't look impressed. It's moving quickly now. I'm going to hold that dagger up above my head. And Johnny's going to yell, Clia, mother of the thousand, mistress of the grain, Come now, Klaia! And then Johnny's going to flip that dagger around in his hand, and he's going to take one last look at Jeremiah. And then he's going to plunge that dagger right in his heart. Okay. (laughs) All right. Uh, I love this. It's fucking metal. (laughs) (laughs) This blessed blade, this letter opener that you have so much history with, Johnny. You're holding it over your head. I imagine you're gripping it with both hands. At that final moment, Jeremiah opens his eyes and sees you, Johnny, holding that blade above him. But his eyes are wrong. And he's staring up at you. And then it's like... Realization washes over his face, 
and he gives you this resigned expression with a twisted smile that's almost too wide for his face. Fate. Funny thing, isn't it? Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Did I say it in that voice? Well, let's cut back to Jeremiah. Okay. Kate is looking at you, and she's surrounded by all of these flowers and plants that are made up from Joseph's body. Her eyes grow huge now, and she's looking through you, Jeremiah. She's looking behind you. Oh my god. You feel something slimy wrap around your neck. It squeezes your throat and wrenches you over the stones of the well, pulling you toward the bottom. Jeremiah, you're falling. Then you're startled awake by a splash of water. You're disoriented, and now you're wet. You're bound at the wrists by rope, and those are behind your back. You are somewhere torchlit, but it's not the jail cell, not the place where you were last conscious. And a dust devil is standing over you, holding a dripping bucket. This fucker again. Can you walk? Hello? Can, can you walk? Uh, of course you can. Get up, old man. All right. Yeah, I can walk, fucker. And after the cold water and seeing Dust Devil, the next jarring thing for Jeremiah is going to be that your voice is off. Yeah, there's something wrong with it. This isn't your voice. It's higher pitched. It has this squeaky character to it. And Dust Devil is going to start helping you to your feet. Come on, don't make this harder than it needs to be. Now, 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 what is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's better if you do the regular Jeremiah voice. But you told me that my voice sounded different, fucker. <laughs> I know. Well, we know your voice sounds different, and it's going to sound different to all the other characters, but I got to hear Jeremiah. All right, yeah, let's do it. And as you're finding your feet here with Dust Devil's help, give me an intelligence check. I rolled a 19. Okay, well, that's a good roll. On a hard success, in addition to your voice, a lot of other strange things are coming to you quickly. Everything about your body, Jeremiah, feels wrong. Your back seems to have righted itself, but your knees are weaker. And your fingers and toes, they're the wrong length. This ain't right. And Dust Devil has this curious look. He's... Looking past you now. Oh, who? What do we have here? And he's going to reach down and pluck something out of the puddle, the one that formed beneath your head. He holds up a gold tooth into the torchlight. Oh, this'll do just fine. I wasn't expecting to get paid. You're too kind, old man. Can I check to see if I'm missing a tooth? Well, Jeremiah didn't have any gold teeth, but you are missing several teeth. Even more than before. Okay. okay. And when Dust Devil bent down to pick up that tooth, Jeremiah, you couldn't help but notice your reflection in that puddle, but just faintly. Your face is covered in bruises and cuts and now soggy bandages. But most of all, it's not your face, not at all. What the hell did Sparky do? Wait, what? Who am I? You, devil, tell me who I am. What the hell are you on about? You're dust devil. Who the fuck am I? All right, come on now. You got knocked in the head pretty good. Yeah, I guess I got knocked in the head, but this ain't me, son. I ain't no millionaire's son. <laughs> I'm not going to play games with you, Sparky. Did I leave my keys? <sighs> Why you keep calling me Sparky? That is your name. That's what you told me to call you. I have never told nobody to call me no Sparky. Oh, fine. Dr. Henry. Is that better? Ooh la la. 
<laughs> it turns out Dr. Henry wrote you have a body. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's go, Sparky. I ain't got time for this. No, you have time for this. Now you look at me and tell me who I am. You're a crazy old fucker and your name's Sparky. You want me to call you something else? I don't give a shit. But you gotta come with me now. You said my hands are behind my back and tied. And I'm bruised and bandaged and my knees are weak. Correct. And Dust Devil's standing here wearing white coveralls. Are they dirty? Pristine. And they're just like the ones you found in Birdie's barn. But these look tailored to fit Dust Devil. And you're wearing rags from the jail. They're a bit looser than last time you were awake. Okay. Is there anybody else in here? Right now it's just Dust Devil. And now that you have a new body, give me a sanity check. That's not going to go well. (laughs) Well, you never know. Yours isn't, well, it's bad. Okay, well, 50 whatever. 58. Uh, I have 13 for the record. Give me a D4. One. Okay, that's not one-fifth. But now Dust Devil's going to do his best to drag you out of here, Jeremiah. How are you responding after this sanity loss? Uh, Honestly, Cup, uh, and I want to describe this the best way I can, I'm getting the fuck out of there. (laughs) Okay, do you want to roll fighting or strength? Ooh, strength is better. What would Sparky do? Sparky's probably digging in. We're in fight or flight or freeze. So yeah, uh, we're rolling strength and we got a 11. Oh, wow. He rolled a 77. Oh, yeah. Oh, what was that for? Yeah. Okay. So he doesn't have me anymore. So I can get up and run. So yes, I've popped up and I'm sprinting like Naruto run because my hands are behind my back. Naruto run. (laughs) Good. I'm going to ask you to roll dex now to see how well you run. You're heading down a passageway, down a tunnel. Okay. How in the hell does that keep happening? 13. Okay. Is that hard success or extreme? That is a hard success. I missed extreme by one. (sighs) That sucks. If you had just one point of luck, you could improve your move rate, but it's going to stay at seven. I'll roll for dust devil. He does get a point added to his move rate. Uh Uh-huh. He was already faster than you. This isn't going to be a long chase. But you did break free, so you at least have an opportunity to do something. You can scramble down the tunnel if you'd like. Okay, then, yeah, that's absolutely what I'm doing. Okay, this is a winding passageway, but so far it's just one tunnel. Sparky! Are you using your action to run? Yeah, I, I I want out. So, like, until I find an exit or a door or a dead end. You hear Dust Devil's footsteps. He's gaining on you. Sparky! Sparky! Until finally you feel his arms wrap around you, Jeremiah, and he pushes you into the wall. I, I gotcha! Oh, you wily son of a bitch! Are you ready? Come with me, Sparky. Or do you want to die right here? Do you want to die right here? (sighs) Yes. Wait a minute, is that what's going down? Look, man, you know the story. You've been studying this shit your whole life. You, You know what this is. Just come on, get it over with. It'll be fast, man. It'll be fast? Is eternity fast? How fast is four fucking ever, you idiot? God damn it! This is a tough situation, but give me spot hidden. Let's see if you notice anything in the tunnel. 16. This is improbable. I've never rolled this many teens before. Jeremiah, you're a miner, so you notice things in a tunnel even when it's dark. Your eyes adjust fast. Uh Uh-huh. There are holes cut into the cave wall. Maybe you felt it when Dust Devil spun you into the wall, but now you're seeing them too. And these holes, they're plugged with dynamite. This tunnel is rigged to blow. Oh, hell yeah. 
and there are wires connecting all these different sticks of dynamite. Uh huh. Wes, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do something a little unorthodox. <sighs> okay. What is that that I can attempt? This is an idea roll. Okay. I like my odds. Do it. I like my odds a lot. I I don't think I have used it the entire game. (laughs) And it's 80. Nice. (laughs) Um, So I'm going to do that. There it is. That was the hard earned. I rolled a 90. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, I guess you were due. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That was super due. (laughs) But you know what? Let's go hard or go home. I'm going to push the roll. Oh, yeah. Uh, You sure you want to do that? Push the roll. Something's going to occur to you, Jeremiah. Something's coming back. Repressed memories have been leaking into your consciousness over the last three days or so. And seeing this dynamite, you just get this flood of images. There was a glass man and a huge dynamite explosion... This is something that happened to you. And there was someone chained to a cave wall, a girl, and a piece of paper. You found it in a book inside that cave. And you used it at some point. This is really nagging at you now. These words are crawling in from the back of your mind. They're not English. You knew these words a long time ago, Jeremiah. Words to veil memory. But even though you've long since forgotten these words, as you're standing here with Dust Devil, you begin to speak them. Uraka, Uraka, Ithokana, Uthikana, Hoda. Sparky, you in there? Hello? Fula, Skila, Fana, Tula, Tulu, Hana, Kala, Sila. What the hell are you doing? In this moment, Jeremiah, facing your own doom, you found these words. But there's no guarantee that you remember the right words or the order they were in or that you remember all of them. Give me that pushed roll. Shit. 83. Oh, no. Holy shit. Let's go back to Johnny. Johnny, you've been performing this binding ritual, and you've stabbed your friend Jeremiah in the heart. Mm Mm-hmm. But that wasn't Jeremiah who spoke to you at the very last moment. That was someone else speaking from within Jeremiah's body somehow. Sparky? Well, great. Johnny, you've made your sacrifice to bind this dark young, and the attempt costs you one sanity point. And you've done it with a blessed blade, which gives you a bonus die. Good. You sexy bastard. Unfortunately, you're not going to get the additional bonus die, the one for sacrificing someone close to you, because this wasn't Jeremiah, really. That is some horse shit. (laughs) No, but it was my body. It's not the principle of the thing that I thought I was doing something heinous. It's not. (sighs) I'm not new to pulling bullshit. (laughs) (laughs) Particularly on me. (laughs) Exactly. Anytime you use the letter opener. (laughs) I'm going to ask you to make an opposed power roll, Chuck, against the dark young for Johnny. Cool. I got some of that. And you need to win this roll to bind. The Dark Young has 90 power. Okay, well, I got 80. And you'll get that bonus die. You'll get that one bonus die. That's right. Okay. Okay, my first roll without the bonus die is a 48. Yeah, we both have regular success. See if yours improves with that bonus die. That is a 10, which gives me an 18. Oh, is that extreme? Booyah. Uh, No, it's it's just hard success. You're certainly beating the 52 for the Dark Young. That was regular success. 
You've buried this knife into Jeremiah's body, who just spoke to you as someone else. And at that instant, the dark young, well, at first it shirks. It takes a few steps backward. This thing was charging at you, Johnny. It was close. It was going full speed. And it reared back. Then it slowly begins to crawl toward you and your animals. It's almost like it's bending to you now. New fan art. New fan art. Let let me see if I can channel my best lance here and say, uh, get over here, you beauty. (laughs) (laughs) I like that. And once you say that, it seems to find more confidence. The dark young begins to stand upright as debris kind of rains down from its body. It's inching even closer to you. It's speaking to you in what you might guess is an alien language. And to do that, she's twisting all of her mouths towards you at once. And you're hearing this discordant echo. Can you, uh, can you not? That's, I've had a day and that is a lot right now. I appreciate what you're trying to do here. (laughs) I have but the two ears. (laughs) She's going to turn them back away from you. (laughs) Okay. She's trying to focus her speech into just one orifice now, but you're still picking up other sounds. And you're not sure if it's a telepathic bind or whether she's actually changed her speech, but you understand her. Oh. Is this better? I do apologize, but I'm a bit nervous. Not nearly as much as I am, I assure you. (laughs) Give me a sanity check. (laughs) This is adorable. Oh, I did not pass that sanity check. Okay, so you rolled a sanity check the first time you saw this Dark Young, and the way that works is you can roll the max sanity loss minus what you lost the first time. Mm -hmm. So give me D10 minus four. Give me a D6. A D6. Hey, that's a one. Yeah. I am not quite to the one fifth yet. We're getting closer. (laughs) Just inching closer. And she's inching closer too. Am I presentable to you? You have never been more beautiful. And I mean that sincerely, I assume. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. That's good. From the absolute fear in your eyes, I wasn't sure. Can I name this creature? Or does she have a name? Do you have a name? What do I call you? Well, that is something of a mouthful. You may call me Kate, if it's more natural. Oh. They called me that once, I think. Well, you know what? That is certainly easier. (laughs) Let's go with Kate. If that's all right with you. What is it you want from me? Well, I am not 100% sure, but what I know is there's something going on around here that is more powerful than me. So I need you to help me. I'll try my best. It seems I don't have a choice. This... Powerful enemy of yours is human? I would, you know, if you had asked me two days ago, I would have said yes. As is now, I don't suspect much of anything's human anymore, uh, myself excluded. And what is your name? May I offer you a ride? Well, I'm Johnny Rhodes. (laughs) And I hop on Kate. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Lovely. (laughs) And Johnny's going to look over at Sinead and say, Sinead, you and I have been through an awful lot lately, and I feel that we have grown very close. That said, reckon maybe you ought to sit this one out. This creature might be large enough to carry Sinead as well. (laughs) 
I feel like Sinead is only going to get harmed if I take Sinead. I, do, I genuinely am thinking she's probably better off here. Okay, well, I don't know if you'd be able to keep Paws away, but Sinead can probably wander this area. No, I want Paws to come with us. Okay, yeah. Paws is kind of born of the mythos as well. Yeah. Paws is going to follow you, and you're leaving Sinead here. You had a moment with her. I don't think she's going to try to follow you. She's scared of this thing and maybe a little jealous. Your new mount. Sure. (laughs) Sure. Yeah, she's walking away from you. Uh, Maybe she'll find Lance. Aw, that's... That makes it sound like you're she's going to die as soon as I turn around. <laughs> <laughs> then Kate scoops you up with one of her tentacles and places you on her back, Johnny. And she's leaning forward. Shall we ride? Uh, yeah, sure. Let's jump back to Jeremiah, who was remembering some kind of spell to alter memory. And he's just failed a pushed roll. Jeremiah, you're standing here in the dark. You're saying the words. You may not even realize it. It's like you're speaking in tongues. Hayatana. Hayatana. Then suddenly, you're standing here in the dark. You're next to this other man. Who is this? Where are you? And this man, he's looking at you blankly. He seems lost. What? Who who are you? What the hell is this? Ah, I don't know. Where where the hell are we? Uh, It's it's some kind of tunnel. Um, well, hell if I know. Okay, that's good. Now, Jeremiah does have some sense of himself, but has no idea where he is, why he's here. You don't remember anything that's happened recently. Let's get the hell out of here. There's light this way. Yeah. Mistakes were made. (laughs) You know, in hindsight, if we had it all to do all over again, would we do it differently? (laughs) Sure. But, you know, the universe brings people together in this way, and I'm just glad we could sit here and talk right now. Because think about it. If none of that had happened, we wouldn't be here having this moment. Come on, follow me. And just like that, the other guy's going to start running down the passageway toward the light. I'm going to run the way Dust Devil went, and I'm going to run fast. Jeremiah's confused. His hands are bound. But you're booking it down the corridor after this guy. I'm running. Ride the snake. Hey, I, I, I see something. There's people. Come on. Eventually, you run through a small torchlit chamber, and your feet splash through a puddle. You're running toward this area that seems to be lit more brightly. Shadows are dancing around the corners of the passageway. And eventually, Jeremiah, you step around this blind corner and walk through an opening into what is a much larger room. You can take a moment to get your bearings. Is this a gladiator thing? Not quite. This is a massive circular chamber. It's been dug out of the earth. And there's a distinctive smell hanging in the air. It's like heavily spiced honey. It's almost choking you. And it's intolerably hot in here. It's not cool like the tunnels were. The top of the chamber has been bored away from the mountain. And you see open sky above. The sky is dark, but it has this strange phosphorescence among swirling clouds. And the perimeter wall, it's lit by sconce torches. And in the glow of those, you can see dozens of people. Oh, you're saying there's dozens, not hundreds of people in this place? Dozens, yeah. So it's like a really good improv show, not like a really sick gladiator thing. Okay, I got you. (laughs) That's right. All right. The people here, they're all dressed in clean white coveralls, just like the ones your friend from the tunnel is wearing. And they're holding candles and torches. They're standing in a slightly lower area of the cave. It's this 
recessed earthen floor. Most of the people are silent. Some have teary eyes. And some have noticed you. They're pointing at you, Jeremiah. The center of the chamber's elevated. It's raised a few feet from where they stand. A man who seems to be a central figure, he's standing there between a dais and what you might think is an altar. He's wearing white coveralls too, but he has flowing red robes on top of them. Is it Colin fucking Brock? Well, you're not sure who this is. No, I'm just asking you as a player. Okay, yeah, it's probably him. Okay, (laughs) all right. The altar is a long, ornate box that has symbols carved all around it. These odd glyphs and creatures. Uh Uh-huh. You think it's probably made of wood, and at the head of the box, the carvings look like they're converging at a sun or a planet, some kind of inset orb shape. Beside that altar near the dais, there's a large brass brazier that's smoldering. You're not sure from this distance, but it looks like they've been burning animal parts over cherry red coals. This might be what's giving off that sickly sweet smell. And the smoke from the brazier is rising into the ethereal sky. Motes of ash are glowing hotter as they meet the cooling night air. Behind the dais, there's a woman chained to the wall. She's gnashing her teeth, fighting hard against those chains, thrashing violently. She has red hair and striking facial features. She's familiar. It feels like you just saw her, but you can't place it. The man with the red robes, he's now arguing with that guy you followed through the tunnel. Okay. Dust Devil, what are you doing? Uh, what? Who are you? Dust Devil, look at me. Where is the doctor? Where is Sparky? Well, who's Sparky? I should have known better. I should have put a better man on this. Look, man, I want to go home. Um, do you know where I live? (sighs) There's no time for this. This is nonsense. As I come out of the tunnel, I'm going to run through the man in the robes, chewing the guy I know out. I'm going to run through him. Okay, yeah, you can try that, but you do have a bit of ground to cover. Give me a fighting brawl roll, and I'm going to give him a chance to fight back. Oh, God damn it. But with a penalty die, since he's engaged with Dust Devil. Oh, I still rolled a 41. <laughs> I rolled an 8. Ooh, nice. That's a hard success. Uh-huh. As you're rushing this man, he sees you. And he attempts to get into a position where maybe he's going to try to slide you over the altar. But as Dust Devil grabs his robes, he's going to stumble. And you barrel into him with your shoulder. (sighs) Jeremiah, you've upended this guy. And he falls right over top the brazier. It kind of takes his legs out. And it's still so hot. He's certainly burned. He's lying on the ground. It looks like he's in pain. I'm still running. Okay, where are you going? I'm trying to, I'm trying to get out. Okay. So is there another door that I can see? It looks like there are some openings, but you'd need to get through that crowd on the sunken floor to get over there. Cool. That's good. You're even picking up some anger now that you've knocked over the man in robes. Mm-hmm. And my hands are behind my back, right? This is advantageous. Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah. Okay. As you run through the dozens of people gathered here, they're going to swarm on you, or they'll attempt to. Hey, fellas. Give me a dex roll against their group dex and see if you can evade them at all. I'm going to give them a bonus die. There's so many of them. Roll a 56. Okay, I rolled a three for the collective. Great. Jeremiah, you're still dazed. You're not understanding what this is or where you are. 
You're trying to run through this crowd of people in white coveralls, and they're closing in on you. Six of these people are going to carry you out of the pit, and more people are following behind them, heading toward the altar. The man in robes is back to his feet now. He's brushing himself off. You can see a bright burn mark across his cheek. When you arrive at the altar, the people lower you down, and they pin you to the top. As they press down on you, you feel grooves and patterns under your back and beneath your fingers. Feels like where blood goes. Okay. (laughs) Jeremiah, you are terribly outnumbered, I'm afraid. You've got some fire in you, old man. I'll give you that. Then the man steps away from the altar and heads to the dais. Welcome to our new day, my friends. Some have called this our last day, but they are fools. The wise among our community, the awakened, you know it in your bones that this is our first day. A return to the old ways, to order, to peace, to the cradle of God. We all crave it so much. At dusk, we cast out gods of insatiable chaos and their corrupt messengers. At dawn, we embrace something more, a new god, one of peace and potential. We tread an old path, one that humanity has wandered far from, but we found it yet again. We shall cast out the god of a thousand forms and the mother of a thousand young, those who plague our world with seeds of chaos and destruction. We will cull their wayward followers. Jeremiah, he gestures to you on the altar. Tonight, my friends, you will hold my hand as we open the gate of their forsaken progeny, a glimmer of hope. We throw ourselves before Umgep Gathka, the unborn, And this man pulls a curved blade from behind the dais. Jeremiah, you're being held down firmly atop this altar. You're watching as this man in robes approaches, then hoists the curved blade over his head. Is there anything you'd like to say or do? Do it, coward. (laughs) Okay, that seems appropriate. I was going to say, that fully tracks. (laughs) I am fate. I am consequence. Aya Umgep Gathka. Aya Umgep Gathka. Jeremiah, the last thing you see is this blade coming down before it hits your neck. Jeremiah is going to lose that last hit point. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you dick. Will I? I'm going to mark my sheet. I'm going to take it down, back down to zero. (laughs) So is he he dead, Cup? Is he dead? That's a wrap on Jeremiah, I think. Aw, man. Yeah, he's done. In fact, Brock continues to hack and hack and hack away at the body even after that first fatal cut. Ellie, you have been lying in this mysterious box for what feels like a long time now. And suddenly, a gout of blood sprays you in the face. Ah, gross. The blood is pouring into your chamber, Ellie. It's pooling around you, soaking your legs and back. The lid covering that porthole in the box slides off. And you see this bloody man pushed aside. Oh god, I'm inside the altar. And Colin Brock is standing there. His face is freshly burned, splattered with blood. But he doesn't look old. He seems rejuvenated, more like the man who welcomed you and Lance into the mansion. He looks down at you in the chamber, Ellie. 
and says, At last, you are awakened. (sighs) Damn it. You are listening to Ain't Slayed Nobody. For ad-free episodes, heaps of bonus content, and special programming, please join our Patreon posse at patreon.com slash ain't slayed. Or subscribe to Ain't Slayed Nobody Plus at Apple Podcasts. See the show notes for full credits, and help us grow by posting friendly reviews and spreading the word to your friends and followers. Thank you and good luck out there.